Hey everybody, it's Lon Seibin. For the better part of a decade now, I've been using Synology NAS devices to power all of my data in my home. They are more than just simple file servers. They've got an amazing web-based interface that not only is just nice to work with, they also have some replications of popular cloud services built right into this device that you have direct control over. So for example, you have the Synology Office Suite here that gives you a Google Docs-like experience with popular Office-like applications. You do, of course, have all of your file sharing. You can run Docker containers on these things. They are very, very useful. However, there's some trouble in Paradise because for those of us who use their higher-end Plus NAS boxes, future versions of these Plus boxes, the ones coming out in just a few weeks, now require that you use Synology's own drives with them. You can no longer choose what storage goes in your NAS box, at least if you are selecting a Synology device. And in this video, we're going to take a look at this new drive mandate, what Synology is saying about it. I'll give you some of my opinions and we will go from there. Now, before we dive into this, I do wanna let you know that this video as always is being brought to you by all of you. That includes everyone who watches this channel on a regular basis and subscribes, along with those of you who have contributed to the channel, either through my donor box page at lon.tv support or through Patreon, the YouTube membership program and Floatplane. Any support you can give is greatly appreciated. And of course, we do have our merch store now with mugs and other goodies that you can pick up as well to support the channel. But let's dive into this week's topic. And I do want to let you know up front that Synology is an occasional sponsor here on the channel. I'm going to give you my opinions about what's going on with Synology. This is not from them. It's rather my analysis. And of course, they're not paying for this video. So why don't we get into it? Now, it's important to note here that the existing Plus Series drives that are out at the time I'm shooting this video are not impacted by this mandate. It only applies to new Plus devices that are coming out a few weeks from the moment I'm shooting this video. So the existing ones are fine, new ones are not. And one of the issues with this is that if you've got an older Plus Series drive and you want to migrate to the new one, one of the nice things about Synology is that you can often take your hard drives out of the old one, plop them in the new one, and it just migrates everything automatically and you can pick up right where you left off. Sometimes it doesn't take all that long to spin up a new device using your existing data. But after this change, if your new Plus device is going to require Synology hard drives and your old one doesn't have Synology hard drives, migration is going to be a bit more difficult. Now, I did reach out to Synology who supplied me with this statement. They confirmed what media reports were saying, which is that Synology branded drives will be needed for the newly announced Plus series. They did leave the door open though for compatibility with other drives, but it's going to require a comprehensive testing and documentation process. And even after that, if drives meet their standards, they only may be validated for use in the future, which they say offers flexibility while maintaining system integrity. And Synology clearly here is concerned about people putting in whatever drive they want and perhaps having technical support issues that are due to the drive selection and not perhaps to the device itself. But in my opinion, that's on the user to pick the right hardware for the job. And if you're doing proper backups, it really shouldn't matter. But Synology is very much going to be digging in on this new policy for their Plus Series devices, which I think is going to turn off a lot of the enthusiast market. More on that later. Now, I did go over to Newegg and did some research about what these drives cost. And what I did is I looked up what I would pick today, perhaps, for a NAS project. So let's say I was going to go with their 8 terabyte model here. Maybe the 12 terabyte might make a little more sense. But either way, we're looking at about a $34 difference between the Synology drive and the Seagate Iron Wolf drive. Now, here's the kicker. The Synology drive and the Seagate drive are the exact same thing. Seagate is making the drive for Synology. Synology is putting some custom firmware on the drive to better work with their NAS boxes, but for the most part, they are the same Iron Wolf drives that you can buy today for less money. They also make some with Toshiba components. Again, Toshiba makes the drive, Synology puts the firmware on it and marks up the price a little bit. So this is what it is, and unfortunately, even though the Iron Wolf drives work perfectly fine with Synology NAS devices, many of you have them in your boxes right now, they are going to require you to use their version of the Iron Wolf 
and not the Seagate one. So why is Synology doing this? Now, of course, we have the statement that I just read, which is their official position, which talks about uh, the stability of the platform and all that. But I think there's more going on in the marketplace. Now, remember, Synology is a worldwide company. They're headquartered, though, in Taiwan. That's where all the decisions get made. And I think they see their market largely as an enterprise business, not as a prosumer business. And there's certainly a lot more profit on the enterprise side. There's less competition for them on the enterprise side. And within the prosumer space, there is a lot more going on. And we've been seeing some, some hints of this over the last couple of years. A big one is that they started putting Ryzen processors in most of their newer Plus series devices. So for example, the 723 Plus that I looked at a year or two ago now has one of those AMD chips. It performs great, but it doesn't have video transcoding capability built in. So if you're running Plex or Jellyfin or one of the other uh, video apps out there, it can't transcode the video. And a few months ago, they took another step to push video out of their product space here, which is discontinuing support for HEVC, H.264, and VC1 on their DSM and B-Station OS platforms. So even if you had an existing Intel-based Synology Plus Series NAS, it is no longer doing video encoding, and the Synology Video Station app is now discontinued as well. And that was something many users were upset about because people were using that to serve media through their home. Now, if you have an Intel version of the Synology NAS device, you could still use Plex and Jellyfin and other applications and still get that hardware transcoding capability, but it's no longer a feature that Synology is supporting. So they really got out of that sector of the consumer space by discontinuing support at least within their own operating system for these video codecs. Now, they are also under a lot more pressure in the consumer market. They've always had competition from QNAP and ASUS Store and TerraMaster, but now we've got Ugreen coming out with a bunch of devices. We saw those at uh, CES this year. Minus Forum, B-Link, and GMK Tech, makers of those cheap mini PCs, they've got NAS devices out there as well. And the cost of entry for these companies is no longer as significant as it used to be because there's a lot of great operating systems for people to install on their NAS devices that provide similar functionality to what an enthusiast could get on a Synology device. I, of course, still like having my stuff running on Synology, at least the mission critical stuff, because there's a company with support behind it. Of course, if any one of these self-installed options fails on me, I'm kind of on my own, but these are really good solutions. In fact, I'm running my media server now on Unraid, along with a few other Docker applications that work better on Unraid than they do on Synology. So from an enthusiast standpoint, I think what Synology is seeing here is a low margin business, a lot of pressure perhaps on their tech support department, and all of this competition, not only from commercial competitors, but also some open source projects that are doing things as good or maybe a little better than some of Synology's own apps. Another example here, and this is still um, an active Synology app, is the Synology Photos app. Great app, but also now we've got other open source options like Image, which work just as well. So there's just a lot of pressure here. And I think if you're Synology looking at this marketplace, the enterprise might be a safer bet for the future. Now, this is my opinion, but I think what's going on here through this drive mandate is that Synology is trying to narrow the customer base for these Plus Series devices. What they're looking for is a customer in need of a turnkey solution with all the robust features that Synology provides. If you want that, you got to play ball and buy their drives and their NAS and turn it on and get yourself up and running. If you're somebody who enjoys a project and likes piecing all the things together yourself, there are a lot of alternatives out there that likely will cost less money that you can build yourself. And I think there's a robust market now forming around that particular sector that Synology just doesn't see a future for themselves in. So that is why I think we're seeing this mandate coming out and why they're also steering users away from a lot of the features that attracted us to these devices in the first place. Now, from my perspective, all of my mission critical stuff will live on a Synology device for some time. Even if I have to buy a new one with Synology drives for my mission critical data, I will likely keep it going because I like their backup software. I like a lot of the things that are outside of media that my Synology device does 
But I am finding that in my own home lab, I'm doing a lot more now on that Unraid device that I set up a few months ago. So that is where the state of things stand here. I don't expect Synology to change their position on this. I do see them adding more drives to the compatibility list over time, but for the most part, I think they have picked the direction that they're going in and that is where they are headed. That will do it for this one. Let me know what your thoughts are down in the comments section. And until next time, this is Lon Sybin. Thanks for watching.